what happens is when you first post, you need for one hour before and one hour afterwards to do my three, two, one method. That means you've got to find five accounts right now. Think of five accounts of people who are similar to yours. People that you want your account to be like, people who are similar engagement, whatever you want to call it, people who are similar to you or your brand. Now what I want you to do is go on their page. So just before you post in that first hour, Welcome back to True Grit and Grace. Today I have the legendary Natasha Grano with us. You know, she is a global influencer, but but more than that, she is making such an impact in the world with her motivational speaking. She was ranked in Forbes as the number one top motivational speaker, female speaker under 40. She's got a best-selling book. She works with, you know, top people on building and scaling their brand, their Instagram. She is a legend on Instagram. If you go check her out, you probably already know her if you are on Instagram at all. Check out Natasha Grano. She is incredible, a mindset coach. She's got a new podcast coming out. She's got a YouTube channel. So check her out. Natasha, I have been so excited to record this. We have talked several times on Clubhouse and we've done a speaking event together. And the more that I researched you and got to know you, I'm like, no wonder I, I loved her from the moment that I met her because we have a lot in common. I didn't know that you grew up dancing, but you also have just so much that you've overcome. And I can't wait to share so many of your stories and your lessons, your mindset techniques, your MBS method. So welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you so much. Oh, I'm so happy to be here. This is such a beautiful show. I see why it ranks in the top 1% on Apple, girl. This is such a cool show. I love it. Well, and thank you. Thank you for being on. Look, I know how busy your schedule is. And that's one of the things I want to get to is that you are so sought after. I mean, you're, you know, you're doing so many things, including your meditation on Saturdays, your clubhouse room on, on Sundays. And I mean, I was at Y'all, she got married on Clubhouse. I was at your Clubhouse wedding. Yes, you know that. It was so fun. <laughs> but you know what? To look at you and to go and look at your Instagram, I mean, you have close to 6 million followers. And probably by the time this airs, it'll probably be 7 or 8 million followers on Instagram <laughs> alone. I mean, it's it's incredible to see. But you have overcome a lot. And a lot of the listeners of this show in particular, they are dealing with health issues. I've got a lot of entrepreneurs that listen to the show and they want some tips on how to scale their business and how to grow their following so they can make impact. But a lot of people are also struggling with some health issues and they want to know, like, how do I get out of that feeling of, you know, they feel stuck or they're in pain or they feel hopeless and to look at you, you're like, oh, life is grand, but they would never know that you came from such a dark place. So can you take me back a little bit to the place where you were divorced, you were mm -hmm. a single mom, mm -hmm. you were really sick, and how you got through that moment? You know, Emily, that is the exact critical point, I would say, of my transformation. That point of my life is what has made me who I am today. I thought everything was plain sailing. I was healthy, I was running. I thought, oh yeah, this is great. Life's wonderful. But I was actually really not happy on the inside. I, was, I wasn't the person I am today. I thought that 
life was as it seems, as it looks, when actually, no, there is so much more to life. There are so many more riches to life that we don't experience until we are forced to look at it in a different light. And that really is where spirituality comes in. That's taking the woo-woo out of it and helping you to understand it on a normal playing field. So anyway, five years ago, I suddenly found myself bed-bound and homeless. And with this illness, after this divorce, I was depressed. I was in my lowest place. I thought, there is no way out. You know, when I was stuck in that place, I thought, there is no way out for me. This is it. This is who I am. And I'm, I'm not getting better. And in that place of darkness and depression, there was a light there's always a light at the end of the tunnel, even if it only comes in once a day, even if it only comes in just a tiny bit, you've got to hold on to that light. And I saw that light and I said, no, I'm going to go back to me. But no, I swear, I'm not only going to go back to me. I'm going to go back to a different version of me. I'm going to come back with vengeance. And I promise, and I made a deal with, with God, with the universe. And I said, if you show me how to heal myself now from my trauma, from my pain, get me out of this place of being alone, you know, that single mom who's just been thrown to the street with nothing going for her with this illness. If you show me how to overcome this, I promise to make it my mission for the rest of my life. I will never go back to the businesses I was doing before. I will always move forwards from here and share with the world how they too can change their life with the way that I heal myself. And from that, I remember then standing in the mirror one day saying that to myself that I swear making this deal with myself making this deal with the universe and looking in that mirror and I said and Denzel Washington was playing in the background it was booming on, on you know uh, my stereo and it was so loud and I was staring at myself in the mirror and it was such a profound thing that happened to me I was looking at myself and tears started rolling down my face because I was ill and not looking at myself, feeling me. I was looking at myself thinking, why is this going on? Everything in my mind was saying, this is only temporary. This is not you. It's okay. You are going to overcome this. You're going to overcome this. This is not forever. This is not you, this is just now, and you're going to overcome this. And I was shouting it over myself, preaching it over myself, listening to this motivational track, which now I have a motivational track. And the word suddenly came to me, Natasha, you're going to be a motivational speaker. And I was like, what? I was like, me? I was like, I can barely talk. I was like, I'm literally struggled to get to the bathroom. I was at my mother's wedding in South Africa. I was meant to be a bridesmaid for her at the wedding. Maid of honor by her side. Could I make it? I could barely even get down the aisle without a panic attack, without collapsing. I was on heart medication. I said, I will do it. I will do everything I can to get down the aisle. And I stood there and I just straight after she walked down the aisle. As soon as they came off, they all went and talked and socialized in pictures. I was out. I, I don't even, you know, I just went straight back to it, but I made it down that aisle for her. And that is what showed me I had the strength somewhere within me. And I looked to myself and said, you're going to heal and you're going to help the world and you're going to heal financially as well, because this is not your story. I'm going to rewrite my own money story. And that is when I started practicing different techniques, meditation, breathing exercise. And individually, they were all very good. And I read book after book after book, and I was seeing different things working. And then in that place of connecting all the dots was born my MBS method, my meditational behavior synchronicity method. Well, I do. I want to get into that. I mean, it's such a powerful story. I think that you said some really key things. First, you needed that little bit of belief in yourself. And you did that by focusing on something that was important to you. And you were like, I am going to walk down that aisle. And once you did that, you you had that goal of let me just get down the aisle. I want to do this. And when you showed yourself that you could, it gave you more confidence in yourself, more belief in yourself. But I also want people to know who are listening that you believed in something big. It's like you believed in something bigger. You you were like listening to things, reading books, and you have this spiritual connection. Now, I know at my darkest point with going through a divorce, it was horrible and with my and and it was a big custody battle over my daughter and, and making a deal with God, 
and and I won't get into details, but it, it wasn't a good situation. That was probably one of the hardest times of my life. And I remember when I made this deal with God and it didn't work out the way that I wanted to. And I was really upset and I was turning my back on God. Like, how could you let this happen? And I was going into that victim mentality. And I think that, like you said, everything that we go through, we have the opportunity to grow through. And it has made me who I am today. It's the relationship I have with my daughter today. And how would you, what would you say to someone who is really struggling? They've made a deal and they're, they're, things aren't working out. The thing they like, well, yeah, I made a deal with the universe and it's not working out for me. What would you suggest they do? Maybe that's something that your MBS method could help with them? How can they start to manifest to start to shift their mindset to start to get out of that place where they're stuck? And I mean, you know, I was bed bound with bed sores for a long time. There's a lot of people that have the same um, complex regional pain syndrome that I have or autoimmune like you had. And they, they they're like, I can't get out of the bed. Or the phone is the heaviest thing in the world that can't even pick up a phone to call for help. What would you say? Is this something that your MBS method can help? So when it comes to this, when it comes, there's two parts here. There's turning your back on God or turning your back on believing. Really, it's in believing in yourself and having faith. My first answer to that, and then I'll... And believe me, I, 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 my back's not turned on God anymore. I just want, I forgot to say that. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> I just I, wanted I, to I, say that. Yeah, completely. Look, you, you lose faith, but it's in those moments. Let me tell you, it's in that moment when it is the hardest time to have faith that you have to have faith because if you don't, it's going to get worse. No matter mm -hmm. what, it's going to get worse. And then it gets even worse because you've actually turned your back on yourself. If you have faith, what's the worst that can happen? You're just going to attract more good things into your life. If you have faith, what's, what's going to happen? You're just going to have more abundance happen to you unexpectedly. What's going to happen if you have faith? You could get better. You might be able to walk again. You might get out of bed. You might actually heal today. Mm -hmm. You have to have faith. And it is a test from the universe saying when you're in that place, okay, let's see how you, how you handle it. How are you going to handle it? Here's a test for you. Here's somebody going to treat you real bad today. Is it going to trigger you? Is it going to fire you up to make you feel that you must behave in a certain way? Or are you going to learn? Have you learned from the last time? The universe will stop testing you with the same copy and paste of a situation once you learn that that is what you're meant to learn from the situation. Does that make sense? Oh, so that makes total sense. And you know what? I stopped saying things out loud. Like I would, I would say, oh, I really need to work on my boundaries. And let me tell you, the universe would give me all these experiences and situations. So I would really learn my lesson with keeping some healthy boundaries. Now I'm just like, okay, I've learned that lesson. I don't need that lesson anymore. Mm -hmm. Let's go on to the next thing. But I, I do believe that. And I do believe it's so important to have faith but it's hard when you've maybe lost it. And that's why I think it's important to surround yourself mm -hmm. with people like you or listen. And you know, that's the great thing now is that people can listen to your motivational talk, your track, your, your interviews, your, they, there's so many people out there. When we talked, when I interviewed on your podcast, we talked about Joel Olstein and how the power he has in his words and how mm -hmm. motivational he is. And it's mm -hmm. sometimes we need to hear things or experience things by seeing what other people have gone through mm -hmm. to help us get that faith back. 100%. How it, how it seems when it's happening to you is tenfold worse than what actually it looks like the day after a week later or, or when it's passed. So here's a really good tangible thing for somebody that wants to take something away from what we're talking about right here. See the situation and then just do a little exercise yourself. Just exhale out. Just take a little moment, breathe, get away from it. Maybe if you can, go into nature and take a walk, take a run even, do whatever you can to get yourself away from that situation. If you're stuck in bed and you're feeling, you know, in, in a 
that place, then you need to do something that takes your mind off it. Maybe watch something, maybe do something, speak something, do something different from the problem. Okay, yeah, so Natasha, then- and I love that you said get out in nature. And you know, people might be listening going, well, I am stuck in bed. But you know what? When I, rem- I remember I was stuck in bed, I had a hospital bed downstairs and I had my husband roll me out in the wheelchair and just sit me outside. And I could just sit outside for a little bit. And that gave me some hope Mm -hmm. that I was going to move out of that situation. So I love that you mentioned that. So that's tip one. Number two, to get over it now, to move forwards from it, what you do is you do a little exercise. You close your eyes and you sit. And you just take a moment and you go deeper. And you go deeper into your mind. You calm down your thoughts. When you've done a little breathing exercise, it's why my MBS is so powerful. I'll explain that in a minute. But what you do... So when you go deeper, you then fast forward to after this problem has gone. So you fast forward, let's say it's coming up in a few days. It's it's a big thing you need to handle. You fast forward to after that court case, after that meeting, whatever it is that you know is going to happen or is, you know, something that's going on, fast forward to after it in your mind. And you imagine looking back of how it went your way, how it went a good way. And you look at it and you say, Wow, okay, I can see that now. It went really well and you speak it aloud, you preach it over of how well it actually went, even though it was a problem. So you've changed how it will go now. Now, it may not go exactly your way because maybe there's more of a lesson that you need to learn from it, Mm -hmm. that that's what the universe has for you. Or maybe the door closes, but a window opens. You don't know what God has in store for you. You don't know what the universe has planned for you. However, Fast forward in your mind, and it all went well, and then you can come back into the now and be like, okay, so I feel better. This actually went okay. This this thing that I'm dealing with actually all resolved and sorted itself out. You can do different methods for it. That's why I'm saying my my MBS method, which is meditational behavioral synchronicity. I found out- Wait, say that again. Say that again so people hear it. So it's meditational behavioral synchronicity, which is the MBS method. So it's totally my thing. I created it years ago and it's been practiced by over 150,000 people who have been through my programs now what does it do it helps you bridge the gap between the life you are living now and the life that you want to lead so it connects all the dots and how does it do it effectively what happens is through an exercise where you learn to go deeper in your mind through meditation, through breathing exercises, through it's rooted in neuroscience, through anchoring, mantra. When you go deeper and you understand how in this altered state of awareness, in the alpha state of mind or the theta state of mind, when you're in this altered state of awareness, you are able, scientifically it says, you're more impressionable. So you're able, therefore, to change your thinking process, your thought process, the things that you've already embedded into your life, which have come out in your outer reality, because your outer reality is a direct reflection of your inner self-beliefs. So my MBS method helps you to erase the limiting beliefs that are inside of you so that you can replace it with a new positive belief about yourself. And when you place it, replace it with a new positive belief, you can then see a different outcome because you believe in something different. And in your mind, I'm going to give you some neuroscience quickly. In your mind, there's a place in your mind called the reticular activating system. And it filters 2 million bits of data every second in colors and sounds and things you see. And what happens is when you focus your mind on something, that is what your reticular activating system says that you think is important. Mm -hmm. Most people spend their time without realizing thinking negatively. The human brain naturally goes off course all the time thinking negatively. And you have to learn to pull it back on course a lot like a plane. The pilot is constantly having to pull the plane back on course because 99% of the time it is off course. And so this is exactly the same with your mind. If you are focusing your mind on something negative, you're going to attract more negativity to you because your reticular activating system in your brain is going to show you evidence around you to prove your belief system is real. So if you want to change what is going on in your outer reality, you've got to change what's going on inside of your subconscious mind. And you rewire your brain to think of something different. But if you do that in an old state of awareness, it has a long lasting effect. And so you do it there. 
you start thinking, I am worthy of healing. I am worthy of abundance. I am worthy of a beautiful relationship. I am worthy of being loved. I am worthy of anything you want. You do this in your mind. Now you focus on this a lot. Your reticular activating system starts to prove around you evidence to show your belief system is real in opportunities, events, and people and places. Everything's changed. And all of a sudden you feel like this opportunity. Opportunity was always there. It's that you're now refocused your mind. It's so true. That's so powerful. I think a good like uh, analogy or proof of that, that whatever we're thinking about, we start to see it more as I remember when I was pregnant, I was like, Oh, because I was pregnant, I was thinking about pregnancy and pregnant people. And I saw pregnant people everywhere. And it was because I was pregnant. And I was thinking about it all the time. So I saw it. It's like when I when I bought a new car, Suddenly I saw Teslas everywhere. I'm like, wow, there's so many Teslas everywhere I look. And it's like, no, it's because that's what I'm thinking about. It's the same with if you're having a negative thought or a positive thought, we start to manifest those things in our life. I think that so much of our success, our healing, so much of it comes from our mindset. And I actually got um, into a lot of trouble, not trouble, but I had a lot of haters come out of the woodwork when I was on the doctor's TV. And I said, it's so much of it starts with your mindset. They're like, how do you get through pain? And I'm like, I, it starts with my mindset. And, and a lot of people are like, you can't get through pain. You can't heal your pain with mindset. And I'm like, no, that's how I have a life of joy and fulfillment and abundance is it starts with, with mindset. How much do you believe of your success is due to your mindset everything oh everything. amen sister everything is down to my mindset and look i do not I, I did it my own way i healed very much how you did i healed because i believed it comes down to three things okay it comes down to your thoughts your beliefs and your actions 80 percent of it is in the mindset 20 percent of it is in the action my book is called the action plan and what do you think it's based on taking action upon your beliefs and feelings. I'm an expert in the law of attraction. That's my thing. I've been studying it for 15 years and I love it. I've read almost every book under the sun around this topic. So I then create things which help people with all of this ancient wisdom, which wisdom from the Mayans. We're going back so far. This is not new stuff. This has been going on for centuries thousands of years this is real life and it always comes down to one thing your belief about yourself if you believe you can heal you will but you've got to truly believe it and here's the thing if you go and you pray and you pray tonight thank you so much for everything in my day i'm so grateful for this well what are you doing the other 90 percent of the day the trick is to always live in a state of prayer prayer is beautiful and we can do it three times a day but always and this is the real part that people miss if you can always live in a higher frequency a state of gratitude that's the highest frequency illness will be eliminated from your body everything will be eliminated naturally as it was for me it could work for you too because you are believing in your healing, you're believing in gratitude. You're constantly in a state of prayer, not asking for it. You're just in a constant state of gratitude and flow. So I always say to my clients and people that work closely with me, I say, okay, you're going to pray, but then the 98% of the day, you're being horrible to your sister. You're being mean to your boss. Your boss is being mean to you and you're bitching about them or whatever it might be. Those actions are contradictory to your prayer. You have to align your behavior. Here is the person raised up here of who you want to be. And here is who you are now on a lower scale. How do you get to being the person up here on the higher scale? Because you place them on a pedestal because it's not in your life yet. Anything that is not in your life yet is on a pedestal. Now, how do you get from here to there? You must align your behavior. Align your behavior in every way to be acting like the person you want to be because they are acting differently. They're not 
crying every day about drama. They're not moaning about their problems with a victim mentality. They are a victor. They went like you and I did, Amberly. They went from victim to victor. They went from pain and depression to abundant and worthy and confident. But sometimes you've got to, this is one of my favorite quotes from my book, be it until you become it. You've got to be the person you want to be in five years, 10 years, tomorrow. You've got to be them today. You've got to be that person now. Don't wait for it to happen in how many years? Make it yours now and then watch how the universe just catches everything up for you. The people, events, and opportunities and places just start revealing themselves to you. So now you are that person. You are abundant and wealthy and healed. Amen, girl. Mic drop on that. Yes. And you know what? I love that you say, yes, you have the belief, but you are an action taker. You are an action taker. You show up, you do the work. And I think that's really important to talk about because a lot of people say, well, I'm manifesting, I'm praying about it, I'm wishing for it. But it's like, no, you gotta, you gotta take the action too. And that's something that you do. Tell us about your book. I, you know what? I I, I heard you had a, a ghostwriter and you took you wrote it in a couple of weeks or something like that. Is that how long it took you to write your book? I, yeah, I, I literally took just less than two weeks with it. And we sat together every wow. day, every day, writing and writing and writing and writing and writing. And he knew my mind. He knew how I worked. So it was so easy at the time to kind of just like go for it and get into. When you've got so much that you want to get out and share with the world, it flows. When you yeah. get a writing block, you got to pause sometimes and say, it's not flowing. Why is it not flowing? And this way, you know, something else on your mind, you, you're tired that day, come back to it. Take a, take a walk, take a moment, go meditate. Yeah. You but know what, though? Different. You uh, One of the things I really love about you, you're brilliant, but you work smarter and not harder. You like, okay, and I'm going to get back to the book as well, because I want to talk about your book some, because especially because you can read it in like an hour. And that's my kind of book that you can read in an hour. But I wanted to, to really highlight that working smarter, not harder. So you researched Instagram and YouTube and like brand building and how to do it the right way, how to make impact for like two years. And when I say smarter, you actually bought an Instagram account of something that was very much in alignment with what you were doing. So you knew what you wanted to do. You're like, why? I, I don't have two years to get my message out there. I want to get my message out there now in front of an audience. And so you actually bought an Instagram account with like 50,000 followers and you scaled that quickly to a million and then 2 million. Then I think when I first met you, you had like, uh, 2 million followers or something. Now it's close to six. I mean, you are queen of let me work. How can I do this in the best way? How can I strategize this? And how can I go just like you did with your book? So many people want to write a book, but they're like, I don't know how to do it. I don't know. And you're like, I'm going to, I've got this message to get out there. I'm going to hire a ghostwriter. And I love that you did that. What was, what inspired you to write your book? Tell us what the book is called. So the book's called The Action Plan, and it was inspired off the back of what I went through. It was like, it's not about me. It's just loads of tangible exercises that people can do that work for me, that might work for them. The success stories and the testimonials we've had back from the book, from my work, from my work in the world, my MBS method are phenomenal. We're talking thousands of testimonials of people who are 10 xing their salary who are 3 xing their income in a matter of weeks we're talking people who've come out of debt three hundred thousand dollars in six weeks we're seeing people who have healed people who have walked again babies conceived when they were told they were infertile we i mean and you hear it they come on my clubhouse they're like natasha this is what i did i did your method and i'm healed i did your method and i'm healed i did your method and i I've now built an entire horse stables. I didn't have any money and suddenly, you know, you hear this stuff live. It's phenomenal. It's why I do what I do. Yeah, I you guys, it, she does a clubhouse room every Sunday and you show up. I think it's the biggest clubhouse room out there. I mean, well, especially on Sundays, it's the biggest room out there. So if you're not on clubhouse, 
get on Clubhouse so you can hear her in in real time and you can raise your hand, come up, ask her questions and hear some of these amazing testimonials that, that she has. Um, I want to get to a lot of people that want entrepreneurs. Cause I know you work with really high end brands and businesses and to help them scale their social media and their brands. And because really, I think that Instagram is kind of your, your scorecard. It, when you go to any event, people don't say, Oh, can I have your business card? They're like, what's your Instagram handle? And when they see that you have a, a huge following on Instagram, that's like, okay, they're legit. They're trustworthy. Oh, people must really like them. I'm going to follow them too. They, they give a lot of value. So Instagram, I feel like more than TikTok, more than LinkedIn, more than, I mean, all those platforms are good but I really feel like Instagram is kind of your scorecard. Do you feel that way? One million percent. Instagram is the way forwards. Every platform has something different, but where do people go? As soon as you meet them in the street, as soon as you meet them online, the first thing they look at after they've spoken to you, and we're all guilty of it. How many Instagram followers do they have? Who's following them? Who's interacting with them? People want to know three things when they find you. One, what value are you offering? So that's your story. That's what you're selling. That's your USP. That's, is your product good or not, basically? Two, who are you associated with? So they want to see who is on your podcast, who is in your database, who are you speaking next to, who are you coaching, who are you alongside, who are you selling to, who is representing you, your brand, and three, where have they seen you? And that is so crucial. That's your press. If you go to someone's page, and this is all of this combined, and you see they have 2,000 followers or even less, you just don't trust them as much as their competitor who has 200,000 followers. And if you're talking millions of followers, it's almost like an automatic follow. You just, you feel it's the bandwagon effect. It's what we call the bandwagon effect, but they've already got loads of followers and you feel like you've missed out by not following. So when you land on their page, you're like, wow. What are they offering? I need to buy it. I want to buy their product because everybody trusts their product. I want to know what they're selling. Get me involved. This is so incredible. When you have numbers, you have an automatic audience. That's why I bought an account. When I bought my account and it had like, I think it was like half a million followers on it, something like that. Oh, it also, already had half a million followers? Yeah, there was attrition. So it lost followers, of course, 30% naturally. You have to build them back. But that's fine. When you start with an account and, you know, they're commodities. Warner Music just bought Daquan, which is a meme page for 85 million. That oh is my God. That had 15 million followers. It's on uh, Wealth Insider magazine. You can see it on the link. Um, and, you know, it's online on, on Google. When you see the amount of, of pay, sorry, that pages are worth, it's incredible. So that shows you how much mine would value for with 5 million followers. That's three times less than what uh, Daquan has. They're sold for 85 million. What your page, anyone's page, everyone's page is a commodity. We buy and sell accounts. We help people to take over a beautiful page that's similar to theirs, you know, for big high profile clients who should have that kind of following. People who oh, already- Oh, wow. You know, so that's one of the things that you actually help people do. Oh, yeah. These high, and you know what, Natasha? I was at this speaking event and when I was up on stage, each speaker had their giveaway, their gift that they were given to the audience. And so the gift I gave was a gratitude journal. And the guy that got on stage after me gave away a million dollar house. And I was like, oh, wow, who's this dude? So afterwards, I go up to him and I was like, wow, way to one up me, man. You know, I was like a house. Wow. And so anyway, we got to talking. He ended up, I, I guess ch he checked out my social media, which is like many, many compared to your millions and millions of followers. But he saw that I had a very engaged audience and, and he reached out, he called me. He's like, Amberly, uh, yeah, I just want to know, like, who does your social media for you? We'd like to hire your branding team. And I was like, um, that would be me. And he, here he was a billionaire. He had no social media following. And I was like, I don't really teach. That's not what I do. I was like, I didn't really know what I was doing. I just started and that's how I started to build. And he goes, but that's the beauty in it. You didn't really know what to do and you're doing it. And I'm like, well, 
now I want to learn some strategies. Like I need you to teach me and my listeners some real strategies on how to build. So let's say we've got somebody who does only have a couple of thousand followers or a big brand like this guy. He only had a couple of thousand followers and he is a billionaire and he holds these retreats. But if someone were to look at his social media, they'd be like, I don't know if I trust this guy. I'm not going to give him my money. He doesn't even have a social media following. You know what I mean? That so what are, idea. yeah. And so that, like, that's your perfect client, somebody like that, that you could perhaps find uh, um, an Instagram account that already has a following that you could or purchase. Or just throw theirs. We cannot, you know, we do that for many high profile clients. People come in and they're like, okay, so I've already got 13,000 followers. If you have anything between Mm, eight to 20,000 followers, I wouldn't suggest buying an account. I would say get a team to grow, whether that's my social media team, whether that's some other person's, you want to keep your account if you have between eight, eight and 20,000 followers, because that means you've built up over that time. However, if you don't have 8,000 followers, then you just want to grow it. And when you have the account, by the way, you still want to grow it. And so what we do is we help people to grow at like 100,000 followers a month to go like so 100,000 followers a month. Well, give us some of the things that you think are the most important in how to grow. Of course. So there are so many things. And obviously with a team, guys, remember, it's going to be far easier. I'm going to drop you one of my biggest and best tips, and it's literally my thing people know me for this one it's called my three two one effect so what you do to write this down i'm going to go as slow as i can because i haven't got an instagram thing in front of me this is how it goes when you post it is all about the first hour of engagement it's all around the engagement for that first hour why because the algorithm picks up on a post if you get loads of likes loads of views loads of shares in that first hour on instagram so if you get loads of interactions, shares and saves and everything that wants to go on on that post in that first hour, you will then go to the explore page. And if you go to the explore page, you can go viral. So how does it work? What happens is when you first post, you need for one hour before and one hour afterwards to do my three, two, one method. That means you've got to find five accounts right now. Think of five accounts of people who are similar to yours. People that you want your account to be like, people who are similar engagement, whatever you wanna call it, people who are similar to you or your brand. Now what I want you to do is go on their page. So just before you post in that first hour before, and you can get through my 321 method, you can do 50 accounts in 20 minutes. These are the numbers. So you can do around like 150 accounts. That's a lot of people to reach. Why am I saying that? Imagine reaching 150 people and saying, hey, to 150 people before you post, I'm about to post. And then, hey, to another 150 people after you post. That's 300 potential people who are going to come and comment and like and save your posts. That's exactly what I I teach people in my mastermind, Natasha. And people go, I don't know why I don't have an engage. I don't know why people aren't engaging on my post. And I'm like, you can't ghost and you can't post and ghost. Like you can't just put up your post and then ghost it. Like I'm done for the day. And I just had a friend of mine. He's got a huge podcast. He's very successful. He's like, I have no engagement. He have, I have all these high profile people on my podcast. I don't have any engagement. I'm like, because you never engage on anyone else's post. And he goes, are you giving me some tough love right now? And I'm like, yeah, I am like, go, it's social media because it's supposed to be social. So I love that you're given that tip. So comment on people's posts before, comment, get those comments going when you post and comment after. So you bet there's more to it. So with the three, two, one, what you do, you take the five accounts that you want that are similar to you and you go through, let's take one account, for example, one of those five, let's say they're called X. Mr. X, you go to Mr. X's page and you have a look at Mr. X's latest post. How many people have commented? Hopefully you've chosen a big account and not someone who's only got a few thousand followers because you need lots of interaction for this reason. You click 
on the first comment, the second comment, third comment, there's 300 comments. That's 300 potential people. So you're going to tap the comment. You're going to go through to that person's post because that person's page, because that person who has commented on the like-minded account probably would like your stuff because they're commenting on someone similar to you already. They're already buying from the person that you want to be like. So we're just going to show them who you are. You're going to give them a little tap on the shoulder and say, what's up? I'm over here. This is what I do. So you go onto their page. You like their stuff. You interact on their latest post and you put a comment on it. And then you go through back to your similar account again. You've chosen, you go onto their latest post. You go onto their comments. Do you understand? You're going deeper and deeper into it. So you've got 300 comments on somebody's latest post. That's 300 people for you to hit up with, hey, love your post. Come have a look at my work. Hey, I love your post. Come have a look at my work. Hey, let's get connected. Hey, let's do this. When you comment on all those accounts just before you post, and then you press post, and then you go do the same thing, what's your engagement 10x? 10x straight away. Yes, and you know, that is what I did when I first started my account and I was growing it, that's actually what I did. And I had exactly what I did. And people ask me how much time I spent on Instagram. And I spent an average of three hours a day, three to four hours a day on Instagram. And people might feel like, oh my God, that's such a waste of time. But it wasn't for me because that's how I built my brand. That's how I booked my TEDx talk. That's how I've sold out of books at every single book signing. Now, I don't spend that many hours on Instagram now, but when I was building it, that's what I did. But do you have a team of people that, so if some were to, someone were to hire you, do you have a team that could do that, spend that time on someone's account to build their account for them? All day. We have literally about, I don't know how many people at this stage, because so many people are virtual and have assigned every person we take on. They have their own team of 10 people who work for them. Wow. So behind the scenes and they all like they'll join, you know, something and then they'll have an account manager and their WhatsApp group and then their account manager will have everybody log in in different places and everybody runs this and it grows and it grows and it grows. It's incredible. But also we have growth methods where we open up my little black book of my connections and my outreach. So I reach 350 million people through having a five and a half million following. How? Because I have people within that following who we total together to 350. 50 million people. So we have an outreach of it. So our clients have that VIP access to my little black book. So when they have a book coming out, when they have a product coming out, we will connect it with my page, with their pages, these big people's pages. So they're reaching hundreds of millions of people for free. Nobody got paid nothing. It's just through the sheer source of connection. But that's what you pay for, having a big team working for you and growing your page. Yeah, and that's the beauty of relationships. And that's something that you've built over this past five years is you've worked your butt off to build those relationships. So you can say, yeah, okay, you've got a new book coming out. Let me connect you with this person or that person. Um, and so that's the beauty of masterminds. That's enough. And now, do you believe in people? Do you think that it's important for people to um, really not buy? Because I know I get hit up all the time on, do you want to buy followers? And I'm like, no, get away with me with the fake followers because I don't want it to screw with my algorithm. But also I want to know who my clientele is. What would you say to people who want to build and they're just looking at the numbers and they're buying followers? So look, there's so many different ways of doing things and everybody, you know, prefers their own thing. The only thing I can say is every door I knock on opens. When you have a following that is monumental as a brand, as a person, when you knock on someone's door and in the virtual world, that means DMing somebody, sending them a private message, your hit rate is like 90% and over. Your hit rate is massive when you have a blue tick and when you have numbers, you know, and you'll know this, somebody, yours is, you know, doing its bits too. So you knock on someone's door and they reply. 
because they trust you because you've got loads of followers you're working with really cool people you've got numbers they're just mm -hmm. like yes this is free advertising for me i want to work with that person now you're saving money you don't have to pay for people to promote your brand promote your product it's called collaboration they want yes. to promote for you they want to because you're going to shout them out people who would charge tens of thousands for influencer marketing you don't have to pay for them. They want a shout out by you. They want to be associated with you. They want you behind them. So anyone that's thinking, oh, you know, I, I want to find my clientele. You can still find your clientele. What, you can't find your clientele and you've got 10 million followers? Of course you can. That 1% is a 1% of 6 million now. Five, can you imagine that 1% is huge? 1% of 100,000 is a lot smaller than 1% of 5 million. The 1% is who you're aiming at. So get it as big as you can. Let that 1% grow there's your clientele. Yes, I love that. So any more tips you can share before we head on to a little bit more about your book and then uh, about Instagram? Um, do you think it's import more important to do collaborations or is it more important? What do you think is most important? Collaborations are big, like with Instagram growth, collaborate with everybody you can. Get everybody talking about your product. For a launch buzz, for example, that helps you grow exponentially. So just do a launch buzz all the time. Just create something and go for it all the time. Find something that you have right now that you can sell. Because if you're not selling, you are not doing a justice to your audience because they are following you because they want to buy from you. You've got to sell to them. Always be closing. A, B, C. Always be selling. Always. You, that's why they're following you. Don't feel shame about it. If you feel, oh, my friends... Create a friends page, honey. Friends is for a different vibe. This is for you and your business. You cannot care about other people's opinions unless it hurts them. He has to always be positive, always serving people. If your product serves people, then you are not doing a justice to the world if you are not selling. So collaborate with people to get it out there. How do you do that? It helps your following grow, helps your numbers go up, your revenue go up. How do you do that? Well, you talk to people. You just say, anyone who's got a following, anyone who's got thousands of followers and anyone who's got hundreds of thousands of followers and millions of followers, those are the people to get in touch with, to collaborate with. And when you collaborate with these people and they shout out your product, say, hey, Ted's uh, yoga mat is amazing. I just tried it. It's incredible. And they put that on their Instagram. They put that on their story, on their post, wherever they're putting it. There's a video, there's a reel. You have just reached the whole of Ted's audience. So now Jane goes and does it for you. Do you get it? And you go on and on and on like this. You just get as many people talking about your product as possible. That could be your little mom circle. That could be your coffee morning group. That could be your group in whatever. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter where, just reach every one of those groups and put it out there. And all of a sudden people are talking about you. And that is what ads do. But you got to pay for them. But what I'm mm -hmm. teaching you is free. Wow, that's powerful. Well, where can people find out more about that, that want to grow their brands? How, how can they, you know, find out more about your program, also your book, um, your podcast, and also if they want to learn the MBS method to really transform their life? What's the best way for people to reach you? So if you guys want to get in touch about any of this and, you know, see if we can connect and I always love to hear from you, even though it's just a DM. I love it. I love reading DMs, you know, bombard me, go for it. I love it. I just, as soon as I read one, it's so nice. I try and reach back to everybody personally. Sometimes I'll voice note you. Um, you can go to my Instagram, Natasha Grano or Natasha Graziano. I think it's the same thing. I'm now Graziano. I always forget that. <laughs> I, I know you. you're married. I, I was going to say you're a newlywed and it's like, that's a big deal to start changing your last name. And it's like, okay, getting used to, to saying my husband and yeah, I know it's so nuts. I love it. I added three letters to my surname. I manifested that. I said, I don't want to change my surname to something completely the opposite of mine. Like something, you know, any surname is going to be different from your own, but if I've if I gone from Graziano to um, Lina, 
you know, uh, they're so different. It yeah. needed to be something. And so I said, I need someone who has a surname that sounds like mine so that people, when they, they Google Natasha Gra, it still comes up Grano, Graziano. It's the same thing. We just added three letters. I, I added three letters into my surname, Zia, which means the light in Arabic. I mean, it's incredible. Oh my it's goodness. I just got goosebumps. That is incredible. I know. Wow. And yeah, I was at your, your wedding on yeah. Clubhouse and that was just featured in Forbes again, wasn't or wait, no, New maybe Times. that's New what it was. I was like, I'm no, good. I think it's a bigger magazine. I mean, unbelievable. That is yeah. just, and now do you feel like Clubhouse has exploded your Instagram or do you feel like Instagram exploded your Clubhouse or they, they're different, <laughs> but work together? They both work together in different ways. My Instagram helped my clubhouse, I think, but my clubhouse has also helped my Instagram with more focused people. You know, and in my room, we bring a lot of our clients on stage and I bring up my big buddies who are big thought leaders and experts. And we just share around secrets in the law of attraction. Like you were saying in my room every Sunday, hopefully y'all be there on Sunday. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to be there Sunday. So yeah, you guys head over to Clubhouse, check her out on Instagram. If you're, you know, driving or out for a run and you're listening to this, you can find all of her information in the show notes. Make sure if there's one of the, you know, something she said that really touched your heart or resonated, take a screenshot and share it on your Instagram and tag Natasha Grano and Amberly Lago Motivation. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, all the information is right here down. So Make sure you subscribe so you can get this download. And um, I'm just so grateful to have you on. I just adore you. And Aww. I'm so, I love when we get to connect. So thank you. Me too. And also for anyone that does tag me in the Instagram stories, when you guys post this episode and anything you've enjoyed from today or anything that you want to share, I will repost that out to my five and a half or 6 million followers. So just come in and, and just go for it because I love I always repost as much as I can so yeah I'm excited I'm excited to connect with you DM me hit me up Natasha Brown on Instagram and I look forward to hearing from you guys and just DM me anything you want to ask my website's here below natashagraziano.com come join my meditation if you want to change your life most people don't realize the issues they're experiencing because they don't know how to meditate when you learn how to meditate and do my MBS method changes your life in every way, has long lasting, profound effects. Well, you are impacting the world in such an incredible, positive way. You're such a light in my life and in this world. Thank you so much for sharing your hope, your wisdom, and, and thank you for helping us with our Instagram too. And just, yeah, y'all reach out to her, especially if you're a big brand and you need to grow. Uh, she's your girl. So I thank you again and thanks for tuning in everybody.